Hey guys, what's going on? It's Roth and Jim here, talking a little bit of comic book origin stories. The reason is, uh, there's a recent report that says that Doctor Strange is in fact not going to be an origin story. Now this isn't confirmed, right. but the report says it's not going to be a, an origin story for that character, and more so that Marvel is moving away, Marvel Studios is moving away from origin stories in general for their characters, that they'd rather just sort of jump in, the characters establish they are to they are, who they are, onward, adventure. So the question is, do we need comic book origin stories in our films. I, th I think it depends on who the character is. Now, I, I am surprised that uh, Doctor Strange would be a character that you wouldn't start with an origin story for because that arc, it defines who he is. Right. He goes from being this arrogant, materialistic surgeon to a, a hero, to somebody selfless, dealing with more of the spiritual realm. And that's a very fascinating arc and it really defines who that guy is. But it's also a story that his that particular arc has been kind of used already in other Marvel movies. We've seen from you know arrogant to hero in both Iron Man and Thor. So I kind of get why they're maybe gun shy about doing it for or Doctor Strange. Or arrogant as well. hero. Right. I don't think they've lost their arrogance. Yeah. To be honest. But <laughs> you know, no, true, exactly. But the the sort of doing that similar uh, arc of humility and also Batman Begins. Um, you know, it had the whole kind of idea of a man going east and getting sure. trained up in the mountains, and it's got a similar sort of thing that Doctor Strange had. Um, counter counterpoint though is that two things. One, I think with Doctor Strange, that origin story, it's also it's not just the arrogance. Um, although this is a little bit true of Tony Stark too. It's it's sort of the um, the lack of care. Yeah. Right, for his fellow man. Like, he's just sort of self motiv motivated, self driven, which is Tony Stark as well. Um, and then sort of connects to a larger sense of purpose right. uh, via tragedy. So, yeah, you're right. That is a little bit familiar, but it's also a character that's not necessarily familiar yeah, no. to, to many people. I mean, we know who Doctor Strange is, but. Um you know, and I'm sure by the time the movie comes out, the character will be more in people's uh, kind of uh, conscience, uh, consciousness. We'll make sure he is. But, but who is this guy? What makes him tick? So that to me suggests then that kind of like, um, uh, like the Constantine TV show is going to do where you start with the character, he's already doing this, and there will be some sort of outside character that serves as sort of the eyes of this world and you, you find out their backstory that way, which I guess works. You just kind of, you know, you're not going to see him in, in medical school or whatever, you know, the, the backstory for Doctor Strange uh, that they would do would be. But um, Constantine, the film, actually functioned that way yeah. too, though. It wasn't, yeah, he was just kind of running around doing his demon business and then it, his backstory was revealed. But you know what's it, it's interesting is that, you know, Superman the movie uh, from 1978 started off, you know, the it was a, a grand origin story and it was awesome and it worked. But Batman 89, they deliberately start it with Batman already existing and the only real bit of his origin that you found out was that quick flashback to his parents getting killed, you know, and, and it took until Batman begins, um, you know, uh, what, like 15 years later for yeah. them to actually go and show him training and making the suit and getting the car and all that fun stuff, but they didn't need it for the longest time. Yeah, and, and that is kind of the interesting thing because they, they just had the confidence that the character was iconic enough that you didn't need to really get into that, you know? Yeah. But that you do slowly sort of give hints for, for at why he's motivated. Because I think in those films it was more like why is he motivated, not how did he do it. it and wasn't there were more origin stories for the villains, too, sure, in a lot there of ways. Were, Right, exactly, and there were more origin stories for the villains. I mean, it's an interesting thing because I think Spider-Man um, being, we saw an origin story twi twice, twice, two different ones in quick succession that were very familiar um, and very similar to one another in a lot do, of ways. Do you think that they're maybe taking uh, kind of a note, uh, Marvel's taking note of kind of Sony's approach to like, all right, now, you know, if you, if you maybe too much origin stuff is, is too much, I mean, you know, they just started filming Ant-Man and that's going to have to have some sort of origin. Um, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy was kind of an origin. It's not like we saw, you know, little little rocket getting experimented on, but it was the story of how this team came together. I mean, it does seem like certain characters need that 
you know. It's the interesting thing about Ant-Man though, right, is that it kind of is and isn't. It's the origin of one Ant-Man, but the other yeah. one's already right. been an Ant-Man. So it is and it isn't. It's both, right? Yeah, so yeah. like that's even more interesting and in then, a way. And uh, then, you know, you'll see here yeah, the Fantastic Four now, they've already had their origin on, uh, on screen before and now the next movie is going to be doing that again. So it's like, that's another thing of maybe too much origin is, is just, it's kind of a pain, you know, to, to get through. Um, do you think that there are, do you think Marvel is, is it, is it a risk for them to just take a character like Doctor Strange and just start it with him already being Doctor Strange? Is that world too wacky? too broad maybe for people to to wrap their head around. Yeah, that's an interesting question. I mean, I feel like if it's done well, and I do think this, that I think that it would be similar to Batman in the sense that they would hearken back um, to how he became Doctor Strange, right? Like, they would hearken back to that. Otherwise, the audience would probably be a little bit at sea. Yeah. You know, like, what is this guy all about? So, but they'll probably weave it in in a more subtle fashion rather than having it be a linear origin story. Um, so, Yes, I, I, I think it's potentially a risk, but my guess is that this is the script that they think is going to work. Right, right. Um, and that my other guess would be that they want to start introducing the character. They don't want to have to wait so, wait to introduce the character into the larger Marvel Cinematic Universe. They want to have him being go. I they mean, the fact that him, they already name dropped him too in Cap 2, which right. means if you did his origin, then it's not really in, in the same timeline now as these the, the current movies, like, right. yeah, they kind of want to get on with it, I guess. I think that's what it is. I mean, I think they want to have him establish, this is Doctor Strange, this is how he functions, this is what he does, now we can play him elsewhere as well. Right. Um, but they will probably have to seed some ideas about where he came from. It's an interesting approach. I think I think there have been lessons learned that, but, that, that there's a fatigue. Yeah, but it's also interesting, too, because you you see with... DC now with uh, with Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. Um, you know, I, I don't think we're going to be one. getting a, a Wonder Woman origin story. She's already suited up. It looks like she's existed. We know that Batman's already existed for decades, apparently, at this point. Aquaman, if he shows up, I don't think there's really going to be any origin story for him. I mean, it, it does seem like DC is kind of just like, let's just get on with it. We don't have time for origins. We we have franchises to make. Yeah. Do you think, so it's just basically then it's skip the origin and just start the franchise and hope people catch up? I mean, I think that that seems to be their approach, but we... We don't know, again, how they would handle it in these individual spin-off films, right? Where yeah. they may just, in, in the, again, it can be the same idea of it's not a linear origin story, but you still get the sense of who these people are via flashbacks and things yeah. like that. Um, you hope it doesn't become some kind of expositional conversation like, well, you know, character C, yeah. this is how it all <laughs> Remember began. that wacky lab accident you know, where you had all those powers? Like, that was crazy. It, yeah, you don't want it to be that. Yeah. And I think that there are some origin stories that are legitimately interesting stories. So it's not like bag it all together. Right. Um, but I do think also there is some, some level of fatigue and audiences are wary of being over explained to and seeing the same thing over and, and over again. A lot of the same tropes being played out. And it is a lot out. of the yeah. same tro tropes, you know? Yeah, I mean, it does sound like there's going to be some uh, some interesting times ahead for Marvel, right? Yeah, so. and luckily there's IGN and Scott Calora and Comics 101 to explain it all if people need a little catch up. That was a shameless, <laughs> shameless, shameless plug. shameless plug for Scott, but we love him and we love that series. All right, guys, those are some of our thoughts. Let us know what you think. Do we need origin stories? Are there certain characters that you're like, no, that one I want to see their origin? If so, who is it? Leave your thoughts below, and for all things comics and origins and whatever else, keep it locked right here at IGN.